Hello, lovelies. Welcome to this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I look forward to sharing my channeled message with you today. And if you love it, please remember to like, share, review, and subscribe. So almost exactly a month ago, we welcomed a new dog into our lives. For those of you who follow me on social media, you saw pictures of him. Um, black dog with a white cross on his chest and two different colored eyes. We named him Odin because, well, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the story of Odin, they say that he traded one of his eyes for all the wisdom of the universe. Now, literally the day before Odin came to our attention, we had had the conversation that maybe next summer we would entertain the idea of getting a puppy because my daughter wanted one so, so badly. Fast forward 24 hours and a friend of ours is posting on Facebook that she and her wife found this sweet pup, maybe seven or eight months old, running down the street with a chain wrapped around his neck. The handle part was around his neck and it was so tight that it had to be cut off. They had videos and photos and my husband took one look at him and just had to have him. And I could hear the universe say yes, yes. And I knew it was important. I knew that he would bring love and challenges to our family. And those of you who know me and my theories on life school, also know that I believe in challenges and that when we welcome the smaller ones, we can avoid some of the bigger ones. <laughs> so we bring Odin into our lives and he's a sweet, smart dog. He is, um, <laughs> can y'all hear my cat? She's participating. Um, so we bring Odin into our world, and yes, he has accidents, and yes, he chewed up a shoe, and all of the things, but within only a few days, he was getting along not only with our other dogs, but with our cats as well. And my daughter is holding true to her promise and cleaning up every accident without complaining, and things go pretty well. He's learning quickly, and we love him. Then this week. <laughs> so um, again, if you follow me on social media, maybe you have seen that I have four chickens. They were my Mother's Day gift. And um, they're city chickens, of course, but they have quite the elaborate, lovely habitat. Their um, <laughs> coop is inside its own, its own enclosed chamber. There's an enclosed tunnel that takes them to another garden area. So they have lots of room to play and roam, but also to be safe. And we haven't had any issues with their safety, of course. So yesterday, the dog, Odin, has attacked the tunnel and smashed it, literally smashed it flat, and there's feathers. And we see that one of our chickens. Her name is Big Nose Kate. Um, in our defense, <laughs> all four chickens are named after outlaws, uh, female outlaws from the Wild West, right? We have Calamity Jane, um, Big Nose Kate, uh, Pearl Heart, and Belle Star. And Kate is the, um, well, for those of you who don't know about chickens, the whole thing about pecking order is real, and she is the slower one, and the other three tend to stay more together. And so she is alone, I guess, more. Then we wake up this morning, and this time he got her again. Uh, the tunnel is flat for about four feet, and she is butchered. Um, alive, walking, talking, I even saw her eat. But it looks like the whole back end of her is sheared off, kind of. Like, um, I told the vet when I called, it was like the worst skin knee I've ever seen. Now, if you do have chickens or ever get chickens, uh, do not be deceived by the fact that they might seem unhurt. Thank goodness I followed my intuition and we took her to the vet. And it turns out she's got some pretty serious lacerations down to the muscle level and you can't stitch her up because of the potential for infection. And so she is living currently in my daughter's room. 
And thank goodness that my son is a future veterinarian because he was not squeamish at all when the vet was teaching her how to care for these very uh, gruesome wounds and how to give her her medication and things. And um, thank you, universe, for that. <laughs> He's nine, by the way, guys. And so it becomes very clear. We cannot keep this animal, right? These chickens are our pets. We... Um, we hold them, we talk to them. In fact, the vet said that she was like the friendliest chicken ever. <laughs> and she was very impressed. Um, and let's be clear, if this dog would have attacked one of the cats or one of the other dogs and caused this type of damage, it wouldn't have even been a question. I'm aware that some people will think that that's strange, but you know, once you fall in love with a soul, it's a soul, right? And so we are discussing on the way to the vet, what do we do? What do we do? We cannot confine the chickens to a super tiny space because that's not fair to them. They deserve a good, happy life. And, um, and we come to the conclusion that we probably need to think about a new home for Odin. My daughter even. Um, I told her that I know she's young, but she needs to participate in this decision, right? So we go through the process. And of course, for those of you who are curious, you know, they're telling us, of course, um, that chickens are quite resilient and can heal right over such things, but that also, you know, an infection could get in and kill her quite quickly. And this is awful. And of course, she's telling my children, which I expect her to do. And I knew it was important for them to be a part of because um, I believe that children should experience things, right? We experience injury, we experience death, potentially, we experience having to make the difficult choice to give up Odin. And um, they should be a part of that, right? Let them learn and grow under our roofs so that when they are out in the world, they have experience to draw upon. So I start reaching out to people about finding a potential home for Odin. And this is painful. This is not something I ever thought that I would consider. And then we get back to more serendipity. I text one of my regulars, longtime regulars, and ask her if she has any idea of someone who might um, be able to love him. He's great with kids and cats and dogs, just not chickens, <laughs> right? She responds immediately, this is a universe thing. We want him. Her daughter's birthday is coming up. Her daughter's a teenager. They've been talking about getting a dog. They just moved. There's a uh, dog cart right next door. Everything is in place, including the fact that her daughter, this teenager artist, has been creating, talking about, writing about, drawing a character since she was a child who has two different colored eyes, just like Odin. And they are so happy and so grateful to get to take him. And my heart is so relieved. And I think maybe this was part of the plan all along. We can't always decide that it's not highest good, it's not part of the plan when it doesn't go the way that we expect. Right? I was watching my little future veterinarian talk to the vet and handle this situation and the wounds and the things that he needs to be able to do fearlessly and I'm thinking about how this will help shape his future and I'm watching my daughter handle the emotional part of this and the responsibility of not just the puppy she wanted so bad but our family as a whole and I'm thinking about the character that she is building and I watch Odin leave with a beautiful family that's going to love him and he's not going to get in trouble as much because he's not going to chase the cats. They don't have cats. And he's not going to be a threat to their chickens. He's going to be an only dog and he's going to get all the love. And I'm grateful. I've cried a few times today. This has been an emotionally trying day. There were moments of limbo where I thought, I, I don't know how my children will respond. I don't know what's going to happen. And I still don't. Kate has a 50-50 chance. And I do think that that was the vet being generous. Now what I can tell you 
is I know she will survive. I know it. Absolutely. She could not be in a more loving space than my daughter's room, and she couldn't possibly have a more loving and capable caregiver than my son. Yes, yes, before you send me messages, of course under our supervision. But watching him, he clearly doesn't need it. And so I find myself thinking about the moments in life that shape character and shape lives that change you forever. The moments of serendipity when the universe gives us that extra little support to not feel sad or alone or afraid of our decisions. And the truth that I was not wrong when I heard the universe say, bring Odin into this family. I was not wrong. He belonged here for the time he was here. And now he belongs with a lovely new family. And we have time to heal and bond in a way we did not expect. To be challenged and stretched in a way just beyond how I thought it might be. And I am grateful. Let's learn and grow now. Let's see it. Let's be proud that we made the tough but right decision for our entire family, the four-legged and the winged ones as well. I questioned whether or not this uh, should be a podcast episode, but I couldn't have anything else or anything better or deeper on my heart right now. And as I speak to you, of course, like always, the clarity comes rushing in. And I realize that, as has been the case for as long as I've been speaking, longer than this podcast is out, when I feel like I just have to talk about something, there's someone else who needs to hear it. So if you're struggling with something just like what I'm saying or something parallel, even in a strange and twisted way, know that I believe that you will make the right decision. I believe you made the right decision in the first place. And I believe that your only job is to learn and grow. Until next time, beloved, namaste. Hi, beauties. My name is Megan, and I couldn't pass up an opportunity to share who Jennifer Hall really is with all of you. Jennifer is a gifted woman who loves to share the tips and tricks of mastering lessons from the universe through real-life experiences. When I found Jennifer about two years ago, I did not know what to expect. My past conditioning had me fearing psychics and avoiding them, and that was something I overcame within my first conversation with Jennifer. She has no desire to control you or make decisions for you, but she will tell you what's best for your highest good, and it's up to you to do the work or not. It's very common for people to seek out a psychic to read the future, and sure, it's human nature to want to know what we don't know, to find the certainty in life, but what you actually get through Jennifer is so much deeper than knowing with, with certainty. It's really about how to grow through the uncertainty and embrace the power each of us hold deep within our own sovereignty and untapped gifts. Jennifer has helped me grow through many lessons in life, relationship lessons with my husband of 15 years, my gifted and stubborn children, career lessons that involved overcoming complacency and dealing with difficult bosses, and of course, lessons for my spiritual growth and tapping into and embodying my own authenticity. Her podcast, Lessons from the Universe, is food for the soul. It is channeled wisdom, and it is personal wisdom that she picked up as she learned and grew into who she is today. Jennifer is well known and sought out. I have people from all over the world reaching out to me to provide a referral to her so that she can speak with them and and they're able to meet her. This podcast makes it possible for people all over the world to receive her messages and receive the love that she pours into the collective. If you aren't a patron today, please consider becoming one and donating as much as $1 per month. If all of her beloved fans donated just $1, it would make an amazing impact on her offerings to the world.
I meet with Jennifer monthly, and I'm also a patron because I believe so much in the lessons from the universe, and I have witnessed the beauty in learning and growing, the beauty in overcoming and smashing the many bubbles of conditioning that I succumbed to in my past. I have a new, more powerful story, and a big part of this story is embracing lessons from the universe. Your story will continue to change, and your donations will help many others change their stories across the globe, allowing the story of the collective to change for the best as well. If you love and live through the lessons from the universe as much as I do, like, share, and become a patron, and watch lessons from the universe take the rest of the world by surprise in the best ways possible. Sending light and love to all of you. Namaste. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. If you haven't already, I want to personally invite you to come out and find me on social media and at my webpage, psychicjenniferhall.com. If you are inspired by the podcast and want more content, consider clicking that patron button on Podbean or you can support the show at paypal.me slash Universal Lessons LLC or by visiting our swag shop at spreadshirt.com. You can find the direct link on my Facebook page and my web page. If you have questions, consider attending one of my quarterly seminars here in Dallas or book your own educational session from anywhere in the world using the link that you can find on Facebook or on my web page. I am sending each of you love, light, clarity, and wisdom. And I want you to know that whether you realize it or not, there's a little brunette with a podcast that's got your back.